Good morning to all staff, students, and parents. Welcome to our weekly assembly. This week's theme will be the Holy Spirit and us. And to get ourselves in that mood and in that mode for worship, we now call on Samantha Wanless, who would lead us in song. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, fill us with your power, live inside of us, you're the living water, never drying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Thank you very much, Samantha. Let us all now stand at attention as we prepare for the singing of the national anthem of Trinidad and Tobago. In the past, I hope and with others we are destined, we Side by side we stand, of the we pledge our lives to thee. Here we make feet on rest from the new focus and we go bless the nation. Here we make feet on rest from the new focus and we go bless the nation. We now hand across to our head girl, Mercedes Modest, who would lead us in our school prayer. School prayer. Praise be to you, almighty God, creator of the universe and all that is in it. We thank you, O Father, for the opportunity which you are giving us to increase our knowledge. May your divine grace enable us to study hard and use what we learn for the good of our fellow citizens. We pray that you will free us from selfishness, lust, greed, anger, and hatred. Warm our hearts with love, fill our minds with understanding, and strengthen our wills in the face of all difficulties. Help us, O oh Father, to make our beloved country of Trinidad and Tobago the kind of place you want it to be, a place where human dignity is respected, where equal rights are accorded to all citizens, where hard work is encouraged and rewarded, and where you, O oh God, reign supreme. Amen. Thank you very much, Mercedes. Again, this morning's theme will be the Holy Spirit and us. And I now hand across to our Vice Principal, Mrs. Bulan Thomas, 
who would do the Bible reading. Our reading this week is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. In this powerful reading today, Jesus reiterates his favorite theme, love. But he also promises something even more powerful as he prepares for his physical departure from the earth, and that is the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we worship one God who reveals himself in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And of all these three persons, the Holy Spirit might be the hardest for us to comprehend. Hence, at times, God the Holy Spirit seems to be too abstract, too conceptual for us to imagine. So who is the Holy Spirit and why is he important to us? The reading we heard from John's Gospel comes from the Last Supper, at which Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He has been telling his disciples that the time has come for him to leave them. But he is saying that they don't need to be hopeless about it because God will still be with them, just in a different form, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is therefore the embodiment of God, dwelling within each one of us who has become united with Christ through our salvation. The Holy Spirit then is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person of God, and therefore we need to think through this quite far-reaching nature of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is not just with us. He is in us, physically dwelling in us. As Jesus says here in verse 12, you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The Holy Spirit is God physically within us, and if God dwells in us, then we will begin to notice a change in our lives. The first of these changes is that as time goes by, we grow in the fruit of the Spirit. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, he says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the characteristics that the Holy Spirit places within us and increasingly should become the governing principles through which we live our lives, the more we come to rely on the Holy Spirit in our lives. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit is God present in us, in the here and now transforming us and growing us so that we can be a blessing to others and to the world. I read an article describing the Holy Spirit as the present tense of God, not God of the history or God of the past tense, not God of the future tense, but the God of the here and the now, active in the world and active in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us experience God on a daily basis, 
the one who gives us faith, the one who sustains us, and the one who keeps us in the presence of God every moment of every day. The Holy Spirit is God with us as empowering us and growing us in the faith. As the Holy Spirit increasingly commands our lives, so we will increasingly become more obedient to God's will for our lives. We must therefore trust in the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us, changing us, transforming us, drawing us closer to God. The more we stop trying to control our own lives and hand that control over to God, over to the Holy Spirit within us, the more obedient we will become. Ultimately, this experience of the Holy Spirit within us is the absolute foundation of our experience as Christians. The Holy Spirit leads us into a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts to use in the ministry of God. The Holy Spirit grows fruit in us to help us become the people we are destined to be. The Holy Spirit leads us into obedience, which is how we express our love and devotion to God. And that is why Jesus had this to say to his disciples. Even though they didn't understand it, he said in John 16, it is your advantage that I go away. For I, I do not go, for I do not go away. The Spirit will come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. For now, we will take the comforting reminder that he never leaves us. We can, as a school community and as a nation, show evidence of having that Holy Spirit within us as we demonstrate love to one another especially during these difficult times, by giving support to those seriously affected by our current circumstances. And as we follow God's rules and commandments, we prove that the Spirit is alive and well and working everywhere. And we prove our great love for Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit therefore be with us today and through this week, through our words, our thoughts, and our actions as we go closer to Christ and personify the love that he continues to show for us. Amen. I now hand across to Mrs. Gudan Thomas, who would lead us in prayer. Let us focus our thoughts more closely on God our Father as we pray. Father, we love and adore you. We are humbled by how deep and how complete your love is for us, and we are grateful for the intimate relationship you choose to have with us. Help us never to take this for granted, but to try with all that we have and all that we are to love you by keeping your commandments. Help us to reconnect with the Holy Spirit, which you have placed within us, so that our words and actions towards others may be a reflection of your love. We pray for healing. Healing not just from illness, but from ill ways. We ask for forgiveness for the times when we've not kept your commandments, and we pray for your help and for your grace to make the wrongs right. Help us as we navigate these times to be mindful of your commandments and to be mindful of our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mercedes, our head girl, will now lead us in song. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away. 
by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side. up like the eagle and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on by the power of your love and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on by the power of your love Thank you so very much, Mercedes. What a beautiful re rendition. And now hand across to Mrs. Buda and Thomas, who will just give us some general notices before we come to the end of our assembly. Thank you, Mr. Wickham. Good morning again to our school family, and thank you again for joining us for assembly this week. As we prepare ourselves for the work of this week, I just want to appeal again to our students to really make every effort to come out not just to join us for assembly but for classes as well that we want to try to discipline ourselves it is difficult i know when we're working from home and in the comforts of the home with the fridge right there with snacks and television and other distractions around to and your bed to want to succumb to those things and those distractions but we do have lessons happening online school and so we do want to encourage you to discipline yourselves to get up and get to your classes on time um, but we also want to remind you to balance that your screen time with other activities as well with your well-being that's important so while we hope all students will be attending classes on time we also want you to be mindful of your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health, and to do things to help to keep yourself positive mentally, positive thoughts, prayer, reflection. We want to encourage you to do fun and creative things as well and, and inc incorporate physical activity into your daily routine. If you've been finding it difficult to do those things, it's very tempting to want to just shut down and shut out the world. We want to encourage you again this week, try again. Get up, get yourselves ready for school, organize your things, and keep in mind that balance that we're looking for. And in all things, prayer. Thank you very much, Mrs. Buddha and Thomas. Very wise words there, and we do hope that our young ladies listen. We are here to continue supporting you through this time, and we ask that you continue asking for help when that time comes. Again, to all our staff, to our students, to our parents, we wish you a very blessed week, and we look forward to really interacting with you over this week as we continue with this new norm. Do have an excellent day, do have an excellent week, and God bless all of you.